Hi, I'm Govind and I'm working with SIVT College which is affiliated to University of Madras and I'm working with this college for 32 years and teaching physics and this lecture series is going to be in digital electronics. We all know that as technology keeps advancing, it becomes important that we have to keep ourselves abreast of the developments that happen in the world. So many new gadgets will come into the market and to understand the function of those gadgets, it becomes essential that we have to know how those devices work and how the components inside those devices work. And now that the analog system has given way to digital system in most of the fields, it has become imperative that we have to learn the function of or the uh, topic called the digital electronics. Now, what is digital electronics? Digital electronics actually deals with digital signals. So, we have to know what is this digital signal and see the as the world keeps evolving, everything keeps changing. We know that the what we had as microprocessor some few years ago as now today advanced to so many advanced level of computer systems, microcontrollers and so on. So, in all this field, the digital electronics has played a very crucial role. So, the most important thing that we have to know today is how this digital components work and to understand the working of digital components, we have to first know the fundamentals of digital electronics and that is what my lecture is going to teach you the very fundamentals of digital electronics. So, we would have started with binary number system because all digital components is based on only two signals 0 and 1. What does the 0 mean? What does the 1 mean? The 0 always signifies some low voltage or low signal whatever it is and 1 signifies the high voltage or high signal. This is a subject part, but this digital electronics today has become a very vital component in most of the fields and we can understand that this digital system has also brought down the cost of many equipments and not only that, it also has reduced the space. See what was big earlier, even the TV they say was as big as a room, but today's TV is a very small, even a tiny, even a pocket sized TV you can have, you know our cell phones have. Uh, we have a screen where we can even see a movie. So, this is the kind of advancement that has taken place in the world and all this is possible only of because of digital electronics and that is why it has become essential to learn about the working of digital components and that is the reason why this lecture is given to make you understand what digital electronics is and how it operates. Hi students, friends. I am Dr. V. J. Lakshmi, Professor in Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, Anna University, Chennai. So, today we are talking about why we are studying the microprocessor. Now, we are living in digital world, right? Are you accepting or not? Yes, now only you are studying the online courses, so which indicates we are upgraded our technology. So, how we are enter into the digital world? Because of the digital devices or digital gadgets. So, how these digital gadgets are in front of your computer is working? Yes, every device is operated based on the microprocessor or one of the processor is available which is controlling the all peripheral devices or your signals. So, the main important element of the digital gadgets or processor that is why we are planning to study about the processor that is microprocessor. So, microprocessor is a programmable logical devices. So, we can program it how to interface with the other devices or memory. So, based on that concept in our my lecture series, we concentrate the 8085 architecture which is the first 8 bit microprocessor which is the Intel microprocessor. So, based on that studying of 8085 architecture, then how to interface with the I O devices that is peripheral devices, how to connect the input like a keyboard, mouse or whatever you have a recent input devices, how to interface with it. 
then how can we get the output or the stored data from the processor either via the display device on the screen or to the printer or to the memory element we are storing the data. So, how to interface these memory and IO devices that kind of lectures are covered in this uh, video. Suppose more peripheral devices are active at a time the processor cannot communicate with uh, the devices parallelly or simultaneously. So, how the processor will respond based on the interrupt that that request is called as the interrupt. So, how the processor with the help of interrupt how it will supporting the peripheral devices and also how it assigning the uh, priorities then what are the types of interrupts how it is activated whether it is activated by or enabled by software or hardware that kind of details also covered in this lecture series. Then mostly we are performing with the parallel interfacing right parallel interfacing means number of input lines. So, here additionally to a parallel devices or uh, consider which is 8155 and 8255. So, how to interface the processor with a parallel interfacing with more number of uh, ports then how to enable these ports as either input or output based on the control word. So, how to initialize the control word and how to write the programming ok. So, based uh, these uh, these kind of uh, topics are uh, covered in this uh, lecture series. So, finally, you can understand what is assembly level language programming, how to write the coding, how to initialize the control word, how to initialize the delay program and what is sub programs or interrupt service routine. So, during that what is the performance of microprocessor this kind of uh, details is fully covered with the with this uh, lecture series. So, finally, you can uh, be ready to write any assembly level language programming for interfacing any devices and also you can do the projects based on this processor, processor based projects you can do it all the best.